Tommy Hilfiger never went to design school, but is one of the best known names in the fashion industry. He is the fashion designer and founder of company Tommy Hilfiger Corporation. He built his brand using his signature red, white and blue tag. Before founding his namesake brand in 1985, he opened several stores starting from the 1970s, which were not popular until 1984. He was approached to design a men's sportswear line which globally renowned as the pioneer of classic American cool style. He sold his company Tommy Hilfiger Corporation for $1.6 billion in 2006, which was later acquired by Phillips Van Heusen who is the owner of Calvin Klein for $3 billion. In 1969, when Tommy Hilfiger was 17 years old, started a business selling jeans with high school friends. He used his life savings of $150 to buy 20 pairs of landlubber jeans from New York City and brought them back to his hometown Elmira, New York, and opened a hippie clothing shop called The People's Place. He used to buy clothes from New York City and sell them at a store. Later, he began designing his own clothes, which he wrote later as, Designing made me happier than anything I'd ever done. I knew from that early work that designing would be my life. As the People's Place was a smash hit, he dropped out of high school and focused full-time on the store. This store expanded into a chain of seven stores scattered throughout New York State. In 1977, the retail market went into an economic slump and People's Place went bankrupt. After People's Place was bankrupted, he started to study commerce as he believed it is important to learn the nuts and bolts of business, and not solely on the creative side. In 1979, he moved to New York City, where he worked at several retailers as a full-time fashion designer. In the same year, he set up a company called Tommy Hill. For five years, he worked for many big names in the fashion industry, including Perry Ellis and Calvin Klein. For many years, Tommy Hilfiger wanted his own label, and in 1984, he got the chance when Indian textile mogul Mohan Marjani approached him to head a men's sportswear label under his own name. In 1986, together with Mohan Marjani, Tommy Hilfiger started a very bold marketing campaign that included a billboard in New York City's Times Square, announcing Tommy Hilfiger as the next big thing in American fashion. As he said, I think I am the next great American designer, the next Ralph Lauren or Calvin Klein. The bold tactics of self-promotion were initially looked down, but later it worked and soon his trademark red, white and blue logo became wildly popular. According to one survey, after only two years of his ads, he had succeeded in convincing 68% of sampled New Yorkers to name him as one of the top four or five important designers. Tommy Hilfiger's brand grossed $5 million in the first year and $10 million in the second. Later in 1988, when the company was grossing $25 million per year, he bought out the Merjani and started a partnership with Hong Kong-based clothing manufacturer Silas Chow. He then started to hire senior executives from his rivals such as Liz Claiborne and Ralph Lauren. In 1992, the company was well established and was grossing $107 million. He took the company public and within one year, the revenue went to $138 million and within the second year, revenue went to $227 million. By 1995, the revenue went over $500 million. More than half of revenue came from just three big stores. Tommy Hilfiger's new marketing strategy made him the industry pioneer. He sponsored the tours of singers Michael Jackson, Britney Spears, The Rolling Stones, Sheryl Crow, Jewel, and Lenny Kravitz. He also collaborated with Beyonce and Enrique Iglesias for fragrance campaigns. The oversized versions of Tommy Hilfiger clothes were promoted in the hip-hop world. Snoop Dogg wore a Tommy Hilfiger t-shirt during a Saturday Night Live performance in March 1994, brought sales figures to an all-time high. In 1992, he spent $15 million in the marketing campaign to launch his men's fragrance, Tommy which at the time was the most money spent on a campaign for men's fragrances. Although Tommy Hilfiger is one of the most commercially successful brands of all time, still, the fashion elite did not readily acknowledge him as a true designer. In 1994, he was the frontrunner for the prestigious Council of Fashion Designers of America Menswear Designer of the Year. 
However, the council decided not to give the prize, but later they reluctantly gave it to him in 1995. In 2012, the same council gave him the prestigious Jeffrey Bean Lifetime Achievement Award. Though he is compared to other big designers like Calvin Klein and Ralph Lauren, still he is accused of redesigning clothes rather than creating new ones. He has been criticized for copying Lauren's preppy style with his big signature on it, the red, white, and blue styles. In 2004, the business had 5,400 employees and was grossing over $1.5 billion. In the 2000s, the brand popularity started to decline, and within some years, sales went down by 75%. As he said, the large logos and the big red, white, and blue theme became ubiquitous. It got to the point where the urban kids didn't want to wear it and the preppy kids didn't want to wear it. He tried many marketing strategies and he built bargain bins, but none of it worked. A women's sportswear collection failed miserably. And while one of its new fragrances performed well, it did not turn around the company. In 2007, he signed an exclusive deal with Macy's to sell the company's best-selling lines only at their stores. Despite the financial failures and slow growth in these times, Tommy Hilfiger remained a popular and well-known brand. In 2006, he sold the Tommy Hilfiger Corporation for $1.6 billion to Apex Partners, who in 2010 sold the brand for $3 billion to Philips Van Heusen Corporation, aka PVH Corp, who also owns Calvin Klein. In 2013, the brand grossed $6.4 billion and $6.7 billion in 2014. Tommy Hilfiger remains the brand principal designer, leading and overseeing the entire creative process. In 2010, Tommy Hilfiger convinced Mark Anthony to start the brand Mark Anthony Collection. In the same year, Mark's wife started Jennifer Lopez Collection. The Jennifer Lopez collection includes contemporary sportswear, dresses, handbags, jewelry, shoes, and sleepwear, along with a home collection of bedding and towels, while the Mark Anthony collection consists of sportswear, dress shirts, neckwear, accessories, suit separates, sport coats, and shoes. Tommy Hilfiger today continues to be the principal designer of his brand, and there are more than 2,000 of his stores in 100 countries. Tommy Hilfiger has become a new retail success story thanks to a willingness to adapt and innovate. In building what has become a $10 billion retail business, the 69-year-old Tommy Hilfiger has successfully capitalized on celebrities, music, and entertainment to keep the label current and top of mind with younger consumers. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.